Once upon a time, when I was a little boy, I decided to try to go into business selling used TV sets to my classmates at Tabor Academy. Since they were not allowed to have TV sets in the dorm rooms, I thought this would be a thriving business. I would go to the town dump and get portable TV sets that people threw away, fix them, and then sell them to my classmates. And I would emphasize the small size of the TV set so they can hide them under the bed when the proctor or the dorm master came by. Well, that enlightening business enterprise lasted only two weeks. The start of the end of that business happened on a Saturday morning. One of my customers wanted to watch the Saturday morning cartoons instead of studying that he's supposed to be. Well, his TV set did not work. And he called me while I was at home having breakfast with my family and told me to come down to his dorm room to fix his TV set so he could watch Superman during the Saturday morning cartoons. Well, when I got there, the TV set was completely dead. No picture, no sound, not even a small pilot light on the channel changing knob. Well, it looked like it would be a long day. But what I did not know, and probably what would have made the day far shorter, was that the boy was in a lot of trouble. He was on academic probation, which means, among many things, that he was supposed to have been in a supervised study hall in a classroom, and not in his dorm room studying, and let alone not watching Saturday morning cartoons. So since I didn't know that, and I will learn that as a great big surprise later, I dug in to start to troubleshoot that TV set. While I was working on that TV set, I took a glance over at the boy's desk and saw several papers with poor grades on it. That should have, my, should have been my first hint that this is going to be a very, very interesting experience. But I ignored it and continued on. In the meantime, the TV set proved to be a real, real challenge. I'm going to show you a simulation of what I did in my own shop here in Bellingham. This is a chassis of a television set similar to the one that I tried to fix at Tabor Academy. If I try to turn up the power and on a test power supply, you see I'm getting voltage, but I'm getting no current at all, which means there's something that catastrophically failed in the power supply, like a choke or resistor. Furthermore, if you look at the oscilloscope, there's very little if no real signal. Now, even if I try to inject a signal with a, an, a test oscillator, you see nothing happening on the oscilloscope. Okay, not only that, if I take a meter, a simple ohm meter, which is this right here, and I put one lead on the chassis, the ground, and another lead on the power, the B plus, to be shown, should show a very high resistance. But watch carefully the meter. It goes all the way to zero. So we've got a very serious condition with a dead short across between the power and the ground. So now let's look and see what's going on with the chassis. So I see one of the capacitors has a large blister right here. You probably can't see it. Same with this capacitor. This capacitor, the end of the case is blown open. You got a large power resistor here with a black spot and it looks like some of the windings are open. Now, look, see what we got here. It looks like we got 
what was a wet spot here and another wet spot here. There's something, some liquid or something happened to this. I know that when I sold this to the boy, it was working, the chassis was clean, and all the components were in good shape. So we've had a catastrophic failure after the boys took this to the room. Let's see what this liquid was. I'm going to rub it a bit and smell it. At first I thought it might have been transformer oil that leaked out of the capacitor, but it isn't. It's beer. Now this is very interesting because this boy is supposed to be the big man on campus. Now I just discovered that he's a beer drinker, which violates all the rules that the school has and most likely violates their family rules too. So at this point in time, I'm going to have to stop working on this because I can't really in conscious work on this when the boys spilled beer into it. Well, fortunately, my question was answered right then and there. For at that time, without warning, without even a knock, the door of the room burst open with a crash. Standing outside of that room were the headmaster, the boy's father, and the dorm master. But out of the corner of my eye, I noticed in the closet, and I discreetly moved my eyes over without twitching my head at all, I saw a beer can. Oh boy. Not saying a word. I left very quietly and quickly. That, my friend, was the end of my career in selling TV sets to students at Tabor Academy. But there was a little surprise that came up 40 years later. For all you sober boarding school students, I've got good news for you. I received a grant from the United States Bureau of Education of $500,000 to hire a group of students to pick up old TV sets across in all the dumps across this land and fix them and sell them, no, and give them away to boarding students in all the prep schools in this land so they can watch TV during study hall. But you need to be sober and they will test your sobriety. Thank you to the Bureau of Education.